Hi, I'm Suzanne Castle, and this is the Thought Leader Thursday. I'm here today introducing you to another incredible leader, thinker, doer, and all around amazing human who's going to help each of us think about our world a little bit differently than anyone else. From artists to teachers, from actors to moms, from the big names to the you didn't know about them till now names, my hope is that you will connect with a leader who helps you light up in your corner of this galaxy. This is the Thought Leader Thursday Show. Welcome back to another Thought Leader Thursday episode. My name is Suzanne Castle. I'm glad that you're here spending about 20, 30 minutes with us as we elevate people all around the globe that are thinking differently, that are looking at the world with fresh eyes and perspective. And today, this woman powerhouse is doing exactly that. So hang on tight. You're going to want to write some things down. So I know you're going to want a pen and some paper because she is really bringing the value to you today. And I can't wait to hear more from Linda. But before we do that, okay, Andrew, I'm curious, what do you think is a good way to build up confidence? Ooh, that is a good question. A good way to build up confidence is uh ooh that's uh interesting uh i think a good way to build up confidence is kind of um uh uh believing in yourself believing that uh and knowing that you can do this and that it is always scarier than it's uh, it always seems scarier than it actually is so that's confidence for me i think that that is such a lovely way to begin today with our fabulous guest i am so delighted to have linda fisk here today but let me tell you a little bit about her work if you haven't heard about this dynamite leader who is everywhere in the media in publication everywhere you look i know you've seen the name linda fisk she is a multi-award winning leader from keynote speakers through authoring a ceo a university professor she's dedicated to amplifying and extending the success of other high caliber business leaders Currently, she's the founder and the CEO of Lead Her Ship Global, a community of unstoppable women where Linda is helping them enhance their leadership blueprint, embrace all that they're trying to do with power and the very best version of themselves and network with C-level women all across the globe. It is an amazing organization. I know she's going to talk about that work in a few minutes. And prior to her role with Leadership Global, Linda was the CEO of Collective 54, she successfully launched and grew and scaled that firm after serving as the global head of brand marketing, public relations, and communications for Susan G. Komen. And if that wasn't enough, this amazing woman forged a career in the entrepreneurial space. She's always been a forward-thinking marketing executive on the edge of cutting-edge brand marketing. She has served as head of marketing. She's developed passion for bringing inspired people together, discovering possibility, solving problems, generating this tribe of goodness to help you live your very best life. She's got a PhD in clinical psychology. She's written extensively on social comparison, depression, anxiety, subjective well-being, personality theory. Holy moly, I could go on and on. She is multi-talented if you didn't already figure that out. And she is here today to talk to us about this amazing work that she's doing. Linda, welcome to Thought Leader Thursday. Oh my gosh, Suzanne, what a pleasure to be with you. What an honor and what a pleasure. Suzanne, talk about a powerhouse. You are the Thank definition you. of energy and motivation and spark and just really igniting the flame within others to pursue their passion and to pursue their purpose. And I really celebrate you and the impact you're having in the world. So thank you. Oh, you're very kind. I just feel like we're in a mutual admiration society, right? I mean, we just, we can lift each other up. I know every time that I am lucky enough to see you on camera, to read your works, to be in a room with you, which I've been privileged to have that opportunity several times, you have this way of reminding us that all of us deep down inside of us have this nugget of confidence. Sometimes it's bursting, sometimes it's hiding. And I know that you're on a confidence crusade to really help different people, but especially women bring up their confidence into every space they walk in. Could you tell us a little bit more about your work? Yeah, just think about this. You know, we don't enter the world with it. No one has it all the time. 
talking about it won't help you gain it. And of course, I'm talking about self-confidence. Right. And we women have a particular difficulty developing self-confidence. Compared with men, women actually don't consider themselves ready for promotion. They don't predict they'll do well on tests. They generally underestimate their considerable abilities. Yes. They don't feel worthy of accolades and achievements. And yet self-confidence is linked to almost every single element involved in a happy and fulfilling life. Confidence actually gives you the skills and the coping methods to handle setbacks, failures, obstacles, roadblocks. Self-confidence doesn't mean that you won't sometimes fail. Everyone sometimes fails. Right. But if you have confidence, you know that you can handle the challenges and not be crippled by them. So even when things don't turn out anywhere close to what you had planned, you'll be able to avoid beating yourself up and having that failure impact how you feel about yourself. So, you know, what I tell women all the time is that you and only you can make new things happen in your life. If you wait for serendipity to provide you with good fortune <laughs> or with increased confidence, you're going right. to be waiting a really long time. Very long time. You have to realize that the path towards self-confidence is one that you have to travel. No one else can do that for you. I think that that is so well said. And the way that you develop that is really, I, I what I have noticed is you really do your research. You pour into people, you lift out traits that either you admire or that you know the world needs. And you remind that person that's in front of you or sitting next to you that they can. And, and I know that part of your mission, your work is to just make sure that you can space has been developed in all sorts of unique ways. And and a lot of that work that, that you're doing, a lot of what you're writing about, what you're talking about, is that glass ceiling that we're just hearing more and more about, especially with the great resignation and the changing dynamics of workforce. I know that you, you could probably give us a few drops of knowledge when we're talking about the glass ceiling and altering our perceptions. I'd love to hear your take on that. Yeah, and I will tell you that confidence is incredibly linked to this idea of, of the glass ceiling. Because if women feel limited, if they don't feel valued, if they don't feel worthy, if they don't feel heard, listened right. to, um, then of course that's going to affect your self-confidence over time. So this idea of a glass ceiling really is important. It really is an urgent issue that I think everyone needs to pay attention to. And the term glass ceiling actually pertains to upper level workforce opportunities that are proven to be impenetrable to yeah. the majority of minority groups and women. So the glass ceiling is kind of a metaphor for the evident but very intangible hierarchical impediments or roadblocks that prevent many minority groups and women from achieving elevated professional success. So get this. In the U.S. population, women make up just over 50% of the entire population. So we are the largest group in the U.S. population. Um, and women make up 58% of the civil labor, for, labor force. So just about 60% right. of the labor force is comprised of women. But women are staggeringly absent from upper level positions mm -hmm. in the American workforce. And there's a long history of women's roles in the American workforce between wars and social movements and political climates, but yet very little progress has been made in the way of gender equality in the workplace, especially as it pertains to those upper level positions. And of course that can affect women's overall level of confidence and their level of um, perceived competence in the workplace. In fact, both male and female managers are twice as likely to hire men over women. Wow. And women are nearly 50% more likely to be hired with blind applications, <laughs> meaning there is no gender uh, identification on the application. Um, and 40% of people notice actually a double standard against female candidates in their own hiring processes. And at companies where 90% of the leadership is men, half of the men of the company view women 
as actually being really well represented. So imagine that you're in a leadership group with 90% of men and they say, oh, well, 10% of women in the leadership role is just fine. They're very well represented. So there's also a perception yes. about women's roles in the workforce that I think needs to be challenged. And, you know, I got to tell you right now, women make up only 23% of all C-suite positions from CMO to COO, CEO, right. et cetera. And yet we make up nearly 60% of the overall workforce. So there is a dichotomy there that we need to reckon with. Yeah. So if, if someone was trying to, you know, I, I hear, all, I see all these memes of, and as someone who loves to wear heels, you know, I'm going to stomp on that glass ceiling with my stiletto until it breaks or whatever, which says that you're on top of it rather than trying to burst through it. So I, I don't know about that particular analogy there, but, but let's say someone is catching this and they're watching, they're like, what is one tip? If I'm, if I'm pushing against it, if I'm feeling the resistance, if I feel like I don't have a path forward, what is, what is one tip that you might give to help a woman leader kind of elevate either in her confidence or in the way that she's presenting herself for an opportunity? Yeah, so a couple things is if you are in the C-suite, meaning you are sort of above that glass ceiling, then I think it um, is incredibly important to understand the glass ceiling, to talk about it, right. to ensure that your company is conducting blind screenings, um, to implement regular bias and stereotype training, and perhaps even develop a women's ERG in your workplace. Mm, yeah. Um, yeah. You know, develop a place where women can be transparent about some of the very overt and also very subtle forms of discrimination that they may be experiencing in the workplace. I also think that it's so important now for companies to set diversity hiring right. and promotional goals um, and to ensure that they really are focused on gender diversity, uh, ethnic diversity, um, uh, gender identification diversity. It's just so important that we understand all the different ways that we can reach out into our population, pull in the very best talent, but ensure that that talent represents a diverse group of backgrounds, cultures, vantage points, perspectives, because that only makes our workplaces stronger. If you are not yet at a place where you have broken through that glass <laughs> ceiling, then some of the things that I recommend for women is that they receive coaching that right. they find a mentor who's willing to invest in them, that they join a community of other women leaders to learn, to grow, to advance, but importantly, to build their own power tribe, to build their own success network. Because I got to tell you, most advantages, most opportunities come through relationship. That's right. They come through the people you know, the people that are going to advocate for you, the people that are going to stand up for you, even if you're not in the room. So those people that serve as your champion, as your advocate, as uh, someone who's going to open up doors for you, that network is critical. So if you have not yet broken through the glass ceiling, the best way to do that is to receive executive level coaching, right? So that right. you have a certain executive presence. Uh, two, that that coach can help teach and train you about things that you may not be aware that you need to hone and polish and learn and grow and advance in. And that you begin looking for mentors who are in your industry and outside of your industry who can guide and direct you and challenge you and help you grow and develop both as a professional and as a person, and that you develop a community around you that is going to advocate for you, that's going to champion you, that's going to open up doors for you. And that community is going to lead you to opportunities and opportunities for advancement that otherwise perhaps you wouldn't even be aware of. Right. And I feel like those are some of the things that you can begin doing if you have not yet broken it through the glass ceiling mm -hmm. to better your chances of winning those very high prestige positions. Well, and I love how a lot of the work that you do with Leadership Global, which can we just stop there to say what a fabulous name, Lead Her 
in all capital letters, SHIP Global. Uh, the work that you do is really connecting those kind of women together, this this tribe. I let you, you call it your power tribe. You know, um, if anybody's been following me for a while, you know, I call it my sparkle squad. So these these people around you that are, are not just cheerleaders, because sometimes you need a butt kicker, you know, to remind you of you need to say no to this so you have time for this, because that's what you said you wanted to do. And I know that's what the women of Leadership Global are doing for each other in all kinds of different ways. And now we have access to this C-suite network, which is amazing. And you have really fostered the development of this. And I would be remiss if we didn't take this opportunity to talk about the work of Leadership Global and how people could get involved. Would you give us just kind of your, you know, your little take on what that what that might mean as a member? Sure. You know, it's my belief that relationships are a powerful part of who we are. They can help us feel like we belong, mm -hmm. like we have something to actually contribute to the world. Relationships can strengthen us. They give us a reason to affect change and perhaps even more importantly, a reason to be changed. Right. But it can be difficult to connect with people when we uh, don't have them in our immediate circle. Perhaps they come from a different background. If you're a different part of the world, maybe they represent a different culture, a different vantage point. And often we surround ourselves with people that look and think exactly like us. Yes. So I think it's important to connect with people that challenge us, that help us diversify our thinking, that may, they may look different from us. They may come from a different industry, a different business. They may come from a different um, religious background. And People that um, challenge us, I think, also give us the biggest opportunities to grow. Yes. And so when we don't understand someone's background, being able to learn to interact respectfully and knowledgeably with those people that live and exist outside of our inner circle, whose culture and worldview may be far removed from our own, well, those are the people that give us the biggest opportunities to advance, to grow, to really accelerate our own understanding. And it gives us an opportunity to use our differences to strengthen our bond as humans. Right. So I will tell you that Lead Hership Global is just that. It is global. We have women from Africa and Europe and Australia and New Zealand and North America and South America. And the good news is that provides an opportunity for cultural competence. Right. It's our ability to understand and communicate with and effectively interact with people across cultures. And that's one of the most beautiful aspects, I think, of leadership global. But I think it's also important for high performing leaders and high performing executives to be able to learn from the practical experiences by others in similar situations. And I know from my own experience that high performing executives tend to value the perspectives of other leaders, the That's wisdom right. that comes from practical experiences learned by others in similar businesses, similar circumstances, similar situations. But most leaders don't feel safe. They don't feel right. like they have a safe environment where they can share their concerns, where they can be really transparent, where they can be really authentic about the challenges that they're facing. So a lot of C-suite executives feel like any public show of vulnerability or uncertainty, that actually introduces risk, risk yes. of losing confidence or losing respect of their board of directors, their employees, their clients, their customers. So being in a community of other leaders actually allows you to have an outlet to continuously learn and improve, but in a confidential setting and get exposure to new ways of approaching problems and issues, new ways of leveraging opportunities. And it gives you the perspective and an entire global community so I got to tell you, Lead Hership Global, I think, provides the kind of safe, supportive environment that allows members to not only develop friendships, but networks with other C-suite executives that enrich their lives, both personally as well as professionally. Yeah. I think it's a, it's a marvelous organization. And for those of you tuning in, check out the show notes because we're going to give you uh, direct links to learn more about Linda's work, about Lead Hership Global, about how to get connected. And 
And I would recommend that you that you take advantage of any opportunity that comes in front of you to see if it is a way to get you networked, to get you support, to to even resource you because the world is changing and is changing at such a rapid pace that the resources can't keep up. So it's nice to always have people that are already doing something to the people that I was just beginning to think about this and everybody at the table together. And I know that's some of the magic that you're making happen, Linda, and I'm so grateful uh, to, to know you, to be beside you, to be watching this journey, to be a part of Leadership Global. I know it is a wonderful organization. So every guest that comes to the Thought Leader Thursday has an opportunity to talk about what their definition is of what it means to sparkle. I can't wait to hear yours, Linda. Well, I will tell you that uh, you, to me, Suzanne, are the definition of sparkle. <laughs> And you have that kind of exuberance, that kind of energy, that kind of infectious optimism that that serves as kind of an emblem of what it is to lead a successful life because you are joy filled. You, you are happy. You are positive. You are someone that is always going to see the silver lining, no matter how dark the cloud and I would say that my definition of sparkle is someone who is unrelenting in their optimism, their positivity, mm, but that. also someone who is doing that authentically. And that's so important because right. there are a lot of people that feel as though they have to put on a brave face, no matter what the circumstances are, even though they may be feeling absolutely like, you know, the world is crumbling and they are they are saddled with incredible burdens, and yet they feel like they need to put on a brave face. That's not the sparkle I'm talking about. I'm talking about those leaders that they recognize the roadblocks, the obstacles, the failures, the setbacks in their life. They recognize those places where they've had to learn and grow because they stumbled, because they've made perhaps a really difficult admission of uh, taking a wrong step, making right. a mistake, um, failing in some way. They recognize that. They've integrated that learning into their leadership and they've moved forward. They have exactly what we were talking about, the confidence to admit them they're wrong and still get up, be resilient, and absolutely tackle the challenges in front of them with a sense of positivity, a sense of optimism, a sense of exuberance, a sense of excitement. Because right. literally leadership is nothing else than a long journey of learning. And the better you are at learning from your mistakes and getting up, dusting yourself off and moving forward, that is what I think real sparkle is. It's so good. All right, I know everybody had pages and pages of notes from this Thought Leader Thursday. Linda, thank you so much for sharing a bit of your genius, your mind, your passion with us today. I want to invite you to keep watching the Thought Leader Thursday. You can check the episodes out. They're all on the website, on the YouTube channel, and they come out every other Thursday. I'm Suzanne, and I'll see you on the next Thought Leader Thursday.